as a result of membership in the University of Arizona Club, Astronomy Club. <laughs> thank you, Dina. And thank you very much, uh, everyone, for being here today. My name is Allison Towner. I just graduated from the University of Arizona, um, and I will be speaking about social support and career networking. So as you heard from Kevin and Amanda, the club has many different beneficial aspects, um, many especially related to the research, um, but because of just the nature of what we do, social groups develop, um, we tend to be a very good social network and not social network in the Facebook sense, but network of people in a social manner. Um, and this can often lead to career networking. Um, first and foremost, um, in terms of social and academic support, peer support is key. There is a lot of peer support in the club. Um, I will expand on that in a moment, but just because of the nature of our shared interest, um, there's a lot of peer support that comes out of the club and that's incredibly beneficial, crucial even, to students in the major. Um, students also have received paid positions or unpaid research positions as a result of membership in the club. And what we found is that our friendships become the basis of future professional networks. Um, so it's very incredible that we can start that at the undergraduate level. Social and academic support has many different aspects. I'm just going to highlight a few. Um, but because we're an astronomy club, um, we all have a very specific shared interest, which means you, will, you are either in the major with these people or you are even in classes with the people who are in the club, which means that you automatically know someone to study with which is incredibly beneficial, especially in the physical sciences. You automatically even, not automatically, but you are more likely to have friends to hang out with. And that's something that's very difficult to quantify, but I think we would, everyone in the room would argue that it's very important to have friends in your field and in your major. And the Astronomy Club is very, very good at facilitating that and creating an opportunity for those friendships to develop. Finally, there are very often connections between underclassmen and upperclassmen. This varies from department to department, how, how easy it is to get underclassmen and upperclassmen in touch with each other, but it can be very difficult at the U of A just because you're taking such different courses. And we found that connections, contact between upperclassmen and underclassmen is incredibly beneficial for everyone involved. Um, Upperclassmen are very often mentors to underclassmen. They're very often guides. Um, if underclassmen are unsure of what to expect, uh, upperclassmen can help get them an idea of what to expect in the major, what to expect in the field. They can get them connected with the department. Um, they can help them apply to REUs or help them understand why REUs are important in the first place. Um, and upperclassmen are also a good resource if underclassmen are having doubts. Uh, astronomy is not for everyone. Upperclassmen are either a good guide to say, um, yes, I had doubts and I am still here and this is why, or if this is the concern you're having, perhaps you might be more interested in another path. Um, and just this is more specific to the U of A Astronomy Club in particular, but we have a number of students who've received um, paid positions. We have six students who hold paid positions within the department as a direct result of their connection to the Astronomy Club. That's not, you know, there's no simony going on. It's not like we choose them in particular. It's just um, we are also a communications network. We send out information about available positions that perhaps aren't advertised within the university as a whole. Um, we have one student who has a research position as a direct result of his membership in the club. And um, that leads straight into professional networks. We have research necessarily leads to professional connections. Even, even if it's just with your advisor, that's an important connection right there. We actively encourage students to attend AAS. We have 10 students at this AAS meeting. We had 16 in Long Beach. We had nine in Anchorage and we had 10 in Austin. We had a large number in Austin as well. Um, and AAS is the place to network in American astronomy. Connections with upperclassmen will eventually lead to connections to graduate students at other departments, and just because of the nature of what we do, students also have to learn how to network, which is an incredibly beneficial and important skill. 
Um, so I hope this has been um, a decent overview of the social and career benefits to membership in the Astronomy Club. Um, I'd like to thank all of the club members and Gina, and I will take your questions. Yes, questions. Yes. Um, as far as networking goes, uh, I was just kind of wondering how much interaction there is with if there are any other clubs of different disciplines on campus, like any physics or biology or anything. Do you ever interact with them and sort of give them a model of how they could help their students connect with advisors, things like that? Um, we interact with them. We haven't discussed, you know, here's the, here's the Astro Club model, try and adopt it. Um, we are in contact with the U of A chapter of SETS. We're also in pseudo contact with the Society of Physics students, which is sort of in about the same state now as Astro Club was six years ago. Um, so we have been in contact. Not, I, I think we should work towards more contact with other clubs at the University of Arizona. Um, we also have some contact with graduate students, but I'd love to see more. Yes. On a national level, has um, I, I keep thinking I know about three other astronomy clubs that are sort of trying to accomplish where you folks are already, and um, I'm just curious as to whether or not you guys are able to get connected to other astronomy clubs at other universities. It's not like there's a lot of universities that are able to have astronomy clubs because of the sheer size of their departments often. So. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think at other universities, especially because of size of astronomy departments, it's not necessarily it's not necessary that it be an astronomy club. I mean, a physics club would work just as well. The, the important thing is shared interest. Um, we don't have nearly as much, we, we don't have a lot of contact with other astronomy clubs. We don't have nearly as much as we would like. We are trying to facilitate more of that with this talk especially, and with a special session we have proposed for DC, doing basically this, but with speakers from multiple institutions. So if you know anyone. Yeah, I'll help you out. <laughs> yes. Oh. I'll just introduce myself. I'm Paul Mason, and I uh, founded the U of A Astronomy Club. And it was, if I, if, if 30 years ago, 1983, if, if I had suggested that someday the Astronomy Club will have its own session at the AAAS meeting, then, you know, I'm sure that, that I would have just been immediately turned around. But I actually want to respond to the question here, because when we were just beginning, this was a big issue of whether or not, uh, you know, our real goal, our, our, my goal, I think, and a few of my friends, we wanted to mainly get speakers because we had only a few people that we would interact with. There were only a few professors teaching undergraduates. But there were so many astronomers there. So what we, what we you know, thought was, well, if we had our club, we could invite people uh, to come and speak. And in fact, over a period of three years, we had 50 PhDs different speak at astronomy club meetings. And but it, but this mostly it was about the social networking, having star parties, getting speakers to come, and, and doing that mentoring. But I just want to thank the, the the students here for doing a great job of just making it into something so much more. They're pretty awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we have this last question. Can you speak louder, please? Could you consider challenging the Harvard Astronomy Club to do whatever it is that you're going to do in DC? <laughs> I think they would invite the Harvard Astronomy Club to participate in their session. <laughs> I am not particularly familiar with the Harvard Astronomy Club, but I would be happy to consider a submission from them if they make one. Um, one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't quite have time to mention in the talk. Um, academic advising at, in Stewart is quite, quite good, but um, students sometimes have leeway in what courses they can take. Upperclassmen are extremely good for men mentioning what electives might be better than others, what teachers might be better than others. Let's thank our speaker.